OK, we're going to do a couple of examples now to think how you might start to find out how you might get asked about this in an exam kind of context. So what I've got here is I've just got some of the data for Hearn. Where is Hearn? On the coast. On the coast. Good. In which part of the coast? The southern On the southern coast. coast. Good. We've got the south coast, Hearn. And you can see that we're talking about 1987 here. So... It says for part A of the question, describe the type of data represented by the daily total rainfall. What kind of data is that going to be, linking it back to the previous exercise? Is it quantitative, qualitative? It is quantitative. Is it discrete or continuous? It's continuous, because it can take any decimal value in between them. Yes? It is being represented by discrete. I think I might have confused us with the dog age thing in the previous bit, but like that's more because of how you say your age. Here, the data is definitely continuous, definitely, but it has been rounded when it's been put into this table. And it says here that Alison is investigating daily maximum gust. So she wants to know like how strong the, the, the wind was at one time, not the average. She wants to select a sample of size five from the first 20 days in Hearn in June 1987. She uses the first two digits of the date as a sampling frame and generates five random numbers between 1 and 20. So she's just going to be using these here. These are her sampling frame. She's just going to use those to have the, the numbers. And we're going to think about what kind of sample that she's going to be taking. What, what type of sample is this? She's taking, a, she's taking the first two digits of the date as the sampling frame. She generates five random numbers between 1 and 20, and she's going to take those. It's yeah, it's a simple random sample. It's a simple random sample. And then it says, explain why Alison's process might not generate a sample of size 5. So they have given you this, right? But I'm telling you right now, they may not give you this in the exam. And they may say to you... Why might she not generate a sample of size 5? So you can have a look at the table right now. We're talking about the daily maximum gust, which is ch -ch -ch, daily maximum gust here. What happens in this data? What do you notice? There are some of them that are not available. So you would need to know this. They wouldn't give you this in the exam necessarily. Some of them are not available. For example, here, here, just two of them. So explain why Alison's process might not generate a sample size of, si of five because some of the random numbers may correspond to days where the maximum gust is not available, which is NA. So you need to know that if NA comes up, you can't use it, which is different to trace, because if trace comes up, you can use it as a zero. OK, we're going to do one more example with using this, and then we're going to try and see what this exercise goes like. So it says here, I've got the same data for Hearn in 1987. And the first thing it wants us to do is to calculate the mean daily maximum temperature for the first five days of June in Hearn in 1987. So it wants the mean daily maximum temperature for the first five days. So here's the... Uh, the daily mean temperature. I think there's a phrasing difference. I don't think this should say daily mean temperature. I think this should say daily mean temperature. They're not matched up, and I think that the whole thing is meant to be mean temperature. So this, this is wrong. It should say mean temperature, okay? So we're going to take the first five days 
So it's going to be 15.1, 12.5, 13.8, 15.5, .5, and 13.1. We're just going to find the mean temperature. So you're going to do 15.1 plus 12.5 plus 13.8 plus 15.5 plus 13.1 divided by 5. There's my calculator. And we get the answer 14 degrees centigrade. Okay, and then the next thing I want us to do is to find the median daily total rainfall for the week of the 14th of June to the 20th of June inclusive, meaning include the 14th and include the 20th. So here's the 14th of June. I'm going to go all the way down to the 20th. And this time we're talking about the total rainfall, which is this column that we've got here. So we've got 0, 3.7, 5.6, 0.17, 0.4, TR, and 0. What did we say that TR stands for? Zero, trace. It stands for trace, which is 0. Okay. So what we're going to do now for the median is we're going to put them in order. So I'm going to have 0, 0. So I've done this one and this one. Even though uh, trace I'm going to use as 0, I'm still going to write it as trace because it, it's still bigger than 0 because there was probably like a droplet of rain. And then I've got 0 0.1, uh, 3.7, 0 0.5, and 7.4. And so the median is 0 0.1. So part C says that the median total, the median daily total rainfall for the same week in Perth was 19 millimetres. Carl states that more southerly countries experience higher rainfall during June. State with a reason whether your answer to part B supports this statement. So this is where it's often good ways to think about how you answer these kinds of questions. So we've got that the median in Hearn was 0.1. The median in Perth is 19 millimetres. So does this, um, does this support the statement that there is more rainfall during June in southerly countries? Yeah, yes and no. Okay, so first of all, let's do the yes part. Yes, why? Why does this support this? Yeah, because the median is greater in Perth and Australia is south of the UK. But Andrew said no as well. What's the no about this? Why is why my why might we say this doesn't really support this because statement? Um, the median is just um, the living values. So what could be done for the current like Maybe it's not so much to do with it being the median though. There's probably more of an issue that we're talking about here. We're talking about more southerly countries experience higher rainfall during June. Is this enough evidence for you to go and publish a scientific paper and being like, it rains more in southern countries? No, no because why not? This is, this is a really, really small sample. We've taken one week in June from two different countries in two separate locations. We're not even looking at the average of the UK. We're looking at one town in the UK and one town in Australia. It's not a very big sample. So really, does it support it? No, 
This is a very small sample. And so may not represent all northern or southern countries. And I think this one is probably the more important answer. The sample size is too small. We can't make any conclusions about what it's like in Australia and the UK just from a week in June. We all know what the British weather is like. It could be one week you could have amazing weather and the next week you could have like the worst rain ever. So you can't make these assumptions from something that is just that smaller sample of things that you've got there. Okay, we're nearly there. We're gonna look at that one last exam question and then you'll just try a little bit of practice. I'm sorry it's been a rather lecture type lesson, but I don't know how else to get you to do the large data set other than you know, pointing out some of these important things. Okay, so the next question that we've got, we're not gonna spend too long on it because I think it's gonna be pretty obvious what's gonna happen. It says, uh, Sarah is investigating the variation in daily maximum gust T knots for Camborne in June and July 1987. Where is Camborne? The, the, uh, south. south, it's very south, isn't it? It's like in Cor southwest. like south, southwest Cornwall kind of area. She used the large data set to select a sample of size 20 from the June and July data for 1987. Sarah selected the first value using a random number from one to four and then selected every third value after that. State the sampling method technique that Sarah used. She's taking every third value. Systematic sampling. This is a real exam question, okay? Systematic sampling from your knowledge of the large data set, so they're not giving us the data, they're saying from your knowledge of the large data set, explain why this process may not generate a sample of size 20. Why? Good. Because some of the selected days may not have Available data. Available data. They may be NA. And I'll just show you what the mark scheme says as well. I know it's only two marks, but these two marks actually can be really important. So this is from the new spec. Yep, this is from the new spec. So you get one thing for saying systematic. And in the large data set, some days have gaps because the data was not recorded, which is what we've said. They may not have available data. It may be NA. There could be gaps. But you can't say that for trace, because trace for rainfall you can use as zero. So you're going to try some questions from exercise 1E. But what I wanted to show you is that I've also given you uh, three blank maps of the UK and one blank map of the world, so that you can label these one, two, three, four, five locations in the UK and the three locations that we've got in the international one. They're just the little dots that are here, here, and here. Is it five? One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, five in the UK. So you can try and test your knowledge of those. And also at the end of this, I've got that blank version of the, uh, the sampling technique so that you can try and fill in those things as well.